Welcome to Worship from the Staffordshire Moorlands for Sunday the 27th of June, whether we come on our own, with family or gather with friends. God of all, we gather from different places, we bring different needs, but we come in the name of Jesus. We have different stories to tell, different experiences to share, but we come in the name of Jesus. We face different challenges, we have different hopes and concerns, but we come in the name of Jesus. Oh 
So let us pray. For eternal hope that comes from you, Almighty God. We give you thanks and praise for your gentleness and compassion. We give you thanks and praise for your peace within. We give you thanks and praise for your light in the darkness. We give you thanks and praise for hope when all seems hopeless. We give you thanks and praise for love beyond measure. We give you thanks and praise. Amen. For giving God more willing to forgive than we are to confess, Help us to see our failings, to see where we fall short, to see where we deceive ourselves, where we close our eyes and ears to the ripples of our wrongdoing. May we breathe in the reality of our actions, the need to change, the depth of our unworthiness. We come before you seeking forgiveness. Now let us breathe in the power of that forgiveness and breathe out the need to live and love in the shadow of your forgiveness for us. That we may forgive as you have forgiven us. Amen. Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favoured me, you made me my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down and destroyed, and if that nation, I warned, repents of its evil, then I will relent. And if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will indeed repent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, 
then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says, look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. Yeah. 
When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders, named Jairus, came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her, so that she will be healed and alive. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realised that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter. James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion, with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was twelve years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. When I was on holiday in Sweden, the country of birth of my great-grandfather, I visited Stockholm. One of the places to visit in the city is Stockholm City Hall, where the Nobel Peace Bank Prize Banquet is held. This is an event for over a thousand guests after the annual award of the Nobel Prizes. There is an indoor courtyard with steps leading up to an amazing hall covered in gold mosaics. What do you know about Alfred Nobel? 
He was a Swedish chemist who made his name and fortune by inventing dynamite. In 1888, his brother Ludwig died, and several papers published Alfred's obituary in error. He was appalled to read, The Merchant of Death is Dead, and he decided to leave a better legacy after his death, and so established the Nobel Prizes. Nobel made a decision to change his life and make a difference for generations to come. Another story from my travels. When, to, when I went on pilgrimage to the Holy Land four years ago, we went to Magdala or Migdal, the town from where Mary Magdalene came. In Jesus' day, it was by the coast of the Sea of Galilee. Nowadays, the archaeological site is inland from the sea. Amazingly, the ruins were buried in obscurity until 2009, and they were only 30 centimetres below the surface. They were discovered when a group of Christians wanted to build a church, and the land was being prepared for the building. The site includes a first century synagogue, a town with a bathhouse, market, shops, houses and a port. The church, Dulk in Altum, which means put out into the deep, was built. The name is a quotation from Luke 5. When they had been unsuccessful at fishing, Jesus said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. The church is stunningly beautiful. The boat chapel has an altar in the shape of a full-size first century fishing boat. Behind it is a huge glass window with a view of the Sea of Galilee. I want to take you to the Encounter Chapel below the main church, which was built over the harbour floor. The stones of the floor had been carefully numbered, photographed and taken up. They were cleaned and then replaced exactly as they were in the original archaeological site. When Jesus stepped from the boat, he would have walked on these stones before going up to the marketplace. It is called the Encounter Chapel because of the striking mural behind the simple altar. It shows the encounter between Jesus and the woman with bleeding. It is of Jesus, the woman, and the disciples, but only below the knee. Her hand touching Jesus' garment is clearly visible. Our Gospel reading is two stories in one. There is the story of Jairus, a Jewish leader, who was overcome with sorrow because his daughter, aged 12, was dying. But he knew that Jesus could heal her. Jesus followed him home, but before they arrived, a message came that the child had died. It was too late. However, Jesus carried on and with her parents and the disciples gathered around her bed. Jesus held her hand. Get up, little girl. And she did. Jairus had faith that Jesus could make a difference. And with his healing hand, he did. Sandwiched in between the two parts of the story is another incident. As Jesus is walking, he feels power going out. He asks, who touched my clothes? Note, it wasn't who touched me. It was a woman with severe bleeding who is desperate for healing and a change to her life. She had such faith that she thought that reaching out to grasp his cloak would be sufficient to cure her. Now fearful, she came forward and admitted that she was the one. Jesus kindly said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Two people, 
Jairus and the unnamed woman believed in the power of Jesus to heal. And not only that, to change their lives. Have you had an encounter with Jesus? How has it changed your life? More recently and more locally, I went uh, on a visit to the Gladstone Museum Pottery, or Gladstone Pottery Museum. What a wonderful grade two historic building it is. Apart from the buildings, there are displays and videos about the history of pottery making and four demonstrations. The first is a potter throwing a, a, a pot on the wheel. He decided to make a bowl when I was watching. His skill meant that he only needed to throw the clay once to centre it and make the object. Perhaps you watched the most recent TV series of The Great Pottery Throwdown, which was filmed at Gladstone. Sometimes the potters had several attempts before making a successful pot. We may be familiar with the imaginative picture image that Jer Jeremiah used to proclaim God's word to the Israelites. The potter had to reshape the pot he was making because it was defective. The craftsman changed a flawed object into something that was useful or beautiful, perhaps both. Jeremiah's message was that God could break down the nation that rebelled against him in order for it to be renewed for God's purpose. If a potter can change a lump of unattractive clay extracted from the ground into a piece of art, how can God change you, change me, into a person more shaped in the likeness of Christ? It might involve a willingness to be broken or to recognise our failings or flaws and to allow the Spirit of God to reshape our thinking, our actions our beliefs, to be more in line with the teaching of Jesus, to allow his love to flow up to God and out to others, just like the shape of a cross.
Let us take time to be in the presence of God. To pray for those who have asked for our prayers or need our prayers. To pray for our community and neighbours. To pray for the world and some situation that concerns us. To pray for ourselves that we might be willing to be challenged and changed by an encounter with Christ. Amen. We share the words of the prayer first spoken by Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And a blessing for today, the love of the faithful creator, the peace of the wounded Christ, the joy of the challenging spirit, the hope of the three in one, surround and encourage us today and forever. Amen.